Johander Mendez. We need a nickname for this guy because I say Johander and it, there's got to be something there. <laughs> we'll come up with it maybe by the end of the show. All right. One can only say that Mendez was rushed through the Texas Rangers system in 2016. Mm-hmm. Prior to last year, the six foot five lefty had only made it to single lefty. He started 2016 in high A, dominated, moved up to double A, was very good, got sent to triple A, was pretty good, and then he hit the superfecta with three September innings in Texas where he basically fell flat on his face. Now, these were all relief appearances, which he's done throughout his career. He's not, he hasn't been predominantly a starter, uh, but you know, you see, Sometimes a lot of minor leaguers do that. It's just about throwing more so than when they come into a game. Uh, but there's a lot to like about Mendez. He's just turned 22. He's still young and very raw in his development as he's only logged 100 innings in a season once, which was last year. And he's only got 292 on his arm in his life. But he's already made it to the pros as a 22-year-old. He's still six foot five. He's a lefty. He controls his walks. He doesn't give up home runs. And he knows how to dial it up to get a K. So he's been quietly, well, pretty quietly, going under the radar on the national scene. But that figures to change emphatically over the next few months. You're starting to see him creep into some top 100 lists, more like in the 60 range uh, on average. And that is, in my opinion, going to jump up tremendously, maybe even as high as a top 20 guy if he remains in the minors and doesn't lose his prospect eligibility uh, by pitching, you know, a number of innings for the big league club this season. So if for some strange reason he's still available, pause right now, add him, then come back and resume playing this. Uh, but if he's someone you should be inquiring about training for, if you think if that's the question you're asking, absolutely, yes. Uh, go start making some proposals after you subscribe to this channel and finish watching this episode. Ralph, are you a Yo Honda Mendes fan? Are you saying, yo, Absolutely. give me some Honda? Yes. <laughs> I am definitely a Mendes fan. Uh, he's somebody that we, we spoke about in depth on the prospect, Razzball Prospect podcast with my, uh, my good buddy, Michael Halpern of Imaginary Brick Wall this past weekend. I uh, wrote about him on Sunday over at Razzball. He was my number one prospect in the Rangers system. And it's an organization that is thirsty and, and needs a pitching prospect to break through and make an impact. I think that Mendez, uh, while he's one of the top left-handed pitching prospects in all of the minors, certainly someone that had a meteoric rise last year going all the way from high A to the major leagues by the end of the season. He's somebody that's more of a mid-rotation type, a high floor pitcher, and there's some reasons for that. doesn't give up a whole lot of hard contact. He has an elite changeup. Uh, that he mixes with a relatively good fastball. The fastball is solid, but I think a lot of it plays up because of how good that changeup is. Uh, he's able to keep hitters off balance. He's got easy, repeatable mechanics. That's an indicator of somebody that's going to continue to throw strikes no matter what level he's at. I think he's got a bit of a rubber arm, so I think that as they start to pile on the innings, it's not going to be an issue. He's got the frame to handle it. Um, I think the bullpen risk is subsided. This guy is going to be a starter going forward. He's somebody that could log big innings for the Rangers this year, especially if he makes some nice adjustments at AAA, which is where I expect him to start the season. Uh, he's somebody that could be in the ro- Rangers rotation by June, really making an impact or at worst toward the end of the season as uh, a bump in the bullpen. But you know, he could stand to uh, improve the command on the fastball a little bit. Um, I think if he can do that, if he can sequence a little bit better, we could be seeing him maybe jump into the, the conversation as a number two type of starter. But at this point, I think he's a very solid number three starter uh, and somebody that I'm definitely willing to own in dynasty leagues. And uh, I think you're banking on the high floor there more so than a high ceiling. You know, just to kind of you know give you a little perspective, he kind of, not you, but you know those watching, uh, he, he kind of, was like a lighter version of what Josh Hader did. And everybody knows what Josh Hader did at this sure. point, just dominating uh, and just rising rapidly because he was just basically mm-hmm. handling every assignment thrown his way. Mendez did pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, maybe not the same elite numbers, especially K numbers. Not the strikeouts. Yeah, not right. the strikeouts. But other than that, everything across the board was right in line. Uh, so that's how good this guy is. And like I said, he's currently dropped to like, you know, in the 60 range for prospects. So yeah. 
if you got a dynasty team, you should be saying, yo, give me some Honda. No, that wasn't that good. So we'll, we'll, work, <laughs> on, we'll work on that one. Anyway, that the, is the Yo Hander. Yo Hander. Sure. There you go. But I don't know if we can do a animation on a t-shirt, but we'll see. No. We'll make a gif out of it. 